um, dear listeners, I'm greet you for the Jesus name, wherever you are. Welcome for this another time, while we are going to discuss the second sermon, which have the title said, God is hidden last day's army. But today, I'm here as a chairperson. My name is Cinda Galvas Kadebue. I'm here with uh, Dr. Paul, who will be the main speaker of this sermon today. But in order to proceed, let me handle this toll to him in order to go on with this subject today. Dr. Paul, welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to you. Before going on with my second sermon, mm. let us kneel for a word of prayer. Thank you. Mighty Father and God who art in heaven, we come before thee as we are. First of all, we want to pray for the forgiveness of our sins. Mm. Forgive us our trespasses and shortcomings. God, cleanse us with thy Holy Spirit so that we can be white, even whiter than the snow. Mm. And give us knowledge of understanding so that we can be able to comprehend the loud cry messages. Give us your Holy Spirit three portions so that we can preach the Elijah message and deliver Elijah message. Mm -hmm. A messenger has the message and resembles the message. Mm -hmm. For we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome for the second ceremony, which has the title, God is Hidden Last Day's Army. Mm -hmm. God is Hidden Last Day's Army. Army. My chairman, can you kindly read for me the scripture reading from Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 18? Of course I can. We read the following. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Okay, thank you. Introduction. Mm -hmm. There is something very powerful and awesome going on in the world today. Yes. God is at work doing something hidden and quiet. Mm. And it is so supernatural. It's beyond human comprehension. Yet what he is doing right now is going to affect the whole world in these last days. God is preparing a small but powerful army of Christians. Amen. This army is going to be the most dedicated on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will come forth to command them to do exploits and shake hell. He's going to close out the ages with the pure, devoted, fearless remnant. All my life, I have heard stories about our godly Adventist pioneers who hated sin. Mm -hmm. These were men and women who spent hours, even days, in fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. They knew God's voice. Mm -hmm. They prayed unceasingly. Mm -hmm. And they had the power and the ability to successfully stand up against immorality in their day. Mm -hmm. These pioneers have long since passed. But God is in the process right now of raising up another army. Mm -hmm. Only this time, his warriors will not be made up 
only of elderly, grey-haired fathers and mothers of Zion. This new army will be composed of believers both young and old, ordinary Christians who lay hold of God. A whole new realm of ministry is about to come forth, and I think it is the 11th hour movement. movement. Yes. The denominational church system appears to be in the throes of death. It has almost no influence in the secular world. Mm -hmm. No mighty power in Christ. Growing numbers of ministers are falling on all sides. Yes. To adultery, mm -hmm. covetousness, mm -hmm. pride, mm -hmm. and the perversions of all kinds. <coughs> Modern pastors of Adventist churches are bringing in entertainment and showmanship. Mm -hmm. One pastor boasted, we want to give Broadway to our people. Mm -hmm. I know of several cases of pastors who are suspected of adultery or breaking their marriages. In other places, especially the United States, the number is as high as 80% according to online statistics. And for those who are in Kenya, I think this week, last week, you saw people fighting in the church. Yes. Yeah? And then there were some in Central Kenya, I don't know, Central Kenya Conference, this, where they said the pastor was involved in your data. And this is an Adventist pastor. Adulterers, Fornicators, mm -hmm. people involved in the occult and witchcraft or secret societies yes. is common. It is all creeping into the church of Jesus Christ. Some accuse me of being hard on pastors by calling them foxes, lobbers, mm -hmm. mediators of the devil, etc., etc., especially those who have been listening to my sermons in Kiswahili. Yes. Not so. Because I am in touch with the many godly pastors who grieve as I do over the backsliding in the ministry today. There is a whole remnant of godly pastors in the land. And I thank God for every one of them. There is a whole remnant of godly pastors in the land. And I thank God for every one of them. Yet, Yet it is still a fact that more and more ministers are lacing down the load of compromise and corruption, or say the religion of relationship. The devil is swaggering about, claiming victory through legal abortion, lampant homosexuality, mm -hmm. drugs, alcohol, satanism, and the Islamic invasion to the extent that the professors of Andrews University say Allah is God, while Allah is Satan himself. Yet the Bible says we are not to flirt. God has a plan and his plan is being manifested. It is put forth plainly in the scriptures. In fact, every demon in hell knows about it. Much of God's plan can be found in the first four chapters of first Samuel. The prophet Samuel is a type of God's holy remnant. The Lord chose him amid the west of times and hid him away in training until it was time to bring forth his new thing. Mm -hmm. God told Samuel, can you read for me Samuel chapter, first Samuel chapter 3 verse 11? Behold. Okay. We read the following. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will do a, thi a thing in Israel, mm -hmm. at which both the, the, e the word, the at ears. which both the ears of everyone that he heareth, heareth. heareth it shall Taigo. Shalitingo. Okay, that is First Samuel, chapter three, verse 
11. Okay, thank you. Mm. This new thing was going to amaze and startle all who heard it. Yet what was it? It was the judgment of God on the old, corrupt, backslidden religious system or religious elite. And the training, raising up and anointing of a new holy remnant. Yes. Now, keep in mind, what God did in Samuel's day, he does in every generation. Whenever the organized church backslides, mm -hmm. compromising and growing cold, God gives up on it and raises up another. Indeed, in every generation, there has been a remnant, a praying people after his own heart. The messenger of the Lord, Ellen G. White, puts it this way. The Lord Jesus will always have a chosen people to serve him. Mm -hmm. When the Jewish people rejected Christ, the Prince of Life, he took from them the kingdom of God and they gave it unto the Gentiles. God will continue to work on this principle mm -hmm. with every branch of his work. Mm -hmm. When a church proves unfaithful to the word of God, the Lord, whatever their position may be, however high and sacred their calling, mm. the Lord can no longer work with them. Yes. Others are then chosen to bear important responsibilities. We mm. call it power shift. Yes. You obey, you eat the good of the land. You disobey, then the Lord disowns you. Okay. But if these in turn do not purify their lives from every wrong action, if they do not establish pure and holy principles in all their borders, then the Lord will grievously afflict and humble them. And unless they repent, will remove them from that, their place and make them a reproach. Yes. God is not worshipped with men's hands. As though he needed anything. Acts chapter 17, verse 25. This is from the upward look, page 131. Mm -hmm. Eli and his two sons, Hophin and Phinehas, represent the dying, corrupted church that has forsaken the Lord's way. A priesthood that loves peace and the religion of relationships. The Bible tells us, can you read for me Samuel chapter 1, First Samuel chapter 2 verse 12. Yes, we read the following. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belilian. Belio. Okay, of Belio. The devil. The devil. Mm -hmm. They knew not the Lord. They knew not the Lord. Yes. These young men mocked the holy things of God. They committed adultery at the very door of God's tabernacle. Mm -hmm. When women came there to serve the Lord, Eli's sons picked them out and seduced them. Mm -hmm. We call temple prostitution. Yes. These men had no fear of God. That is, they simply went through the motions of the sacrifices. To them, worship it was a drama. Are you with me, my friends? We are together. Ellen G. White puts it this way. The recreant priests added licentiousness to the dark catalog of their crimes, mm -hmm. yet they still polluted by their presence in the tabernacle of the Lord and laden with sin, dared to come into the presence of our holy God. As the men of Israel witnessed the corrupt cause of the priests, they thought it is safer for their families not to come up to the appointed place of worship. Many went from Shiloh with their peace disturbed. Mm -hmm. Their indignation aroused until they at last determined to offer their sacrifices themselves. Eh? Haven't you heard? I would, if that is the case, I would be worshipping at home. Concluding that this would be fully as acceptable to God as to sanction in any manner the 
abominations practiced in the sanctuary. Yes. The signs of the times, volume 1, page 264, column 3, December 1, 1881. I think most Kenyans are familiar with what has happened yesterday in Kenya. Uh, yeah. People fighting over 12.5 million. Yeah. The pastor beaten in the church. Yeah, the, I, I, you see, and that is called the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Later on, one old man, he said he was saved in the year 1965. He had never, never in his life seen people fighting in the church, but it has happened in the SDA church. Things are changing. Eh? Things have changed. Mm -hmm. eh? It is business. People are just looking for money. Of course. I say, worst of all, their father winked at their sin. Mm -hmm. Committing a data, you don't care. And here you are the president or the church elder. And here people are ordering Pastor Ruguri, come and solve this problem. We want you remove this and that. I don't know what, where they, we, we, they will end. Eli was now more than 90 years old and he had grown fat. You know, grow fat. When you eat print, print, uh, fringe benefits, mm -hmm. you become fat as our modern pastors. Of course. Uh, Comfortable and stiff, naked. That is the fun of mission pets as they stack up. You know, fringe benefits. Okay. When they stack up, you just enjoy eh? riding a car, eating, eh, going everywhere so that you become fat. And I normally say, all oh, those fatty people will never make it to heaven because it is not God's plan for you to be fat. He had become addicted to that choice. Red cuts of meat his sons took from the temple offerings. Eli I knew this meat was abominable, that is, but he did nothing to stop these sons from stealing it. Ellen G. White put it this way. But although he had been appointed to govern the people, he did not rule his own household. Yes. Eli was an indulgent father. Loving peace and easy, he did not exercise his authority to collect the evil habits and the passions of his children, rather than contend with them or punish them, he would submit to their will and give them their own way. What do you want, my children? Okay, it's your right. We have such fathers, like Eli, that is from patriarchs and prophecy. Page 576. He winked at their adulterous indulgences. You see, your sons, they are in the holy office. They are sleeping with women. They say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say amen. Such are the pastors in our modern churches. This is a picture of the evil way to which the organized church has turned to today. Mm -hmm. God denominations now are pushing to ordain homosexual, homosexuals, bringing an abomination into God's house. Eli and his sons also represent that dead, cold, former priesthood that has grown soft on sin, like our modern pastors. The Lord's messenger states, the greatest want of the world is the want of many. Many who will not be bought or sold, mm. many who in their inmost souls are true and honest, many who do not fear to call sin by its right name, mm. many whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole, yes. many who will stand for the light though the heavens fall. Mm. Are you with me? We are, together. we are looking for such people to come into the 11th hour movement. Mm -hmm. We don't want these modern pastors. They can't do anything. Ellen G. White, Education, page 57. Like Eli, many pastors today are cowards when it comes to naming sin. Yes. Are you with me? They merely, go to, they merely go through the motions of the ministry, having a form of godliness, but no power. Mm -hmm. It is because they have grown comfortable in their positions. 
they have lost the touch of God. They no longer hear his voice. Of course. Because they wink at evil. And they sometimes share and they even inspire them. Mm -hmm. The Lord, the God of Israel, weeps bitterly since he chose the city of Jerusalem, that is SDA, and they set it in the midst of the nations and the countries. That means among the denominations. And she has changed the my judgments into wickedness more than the nations and my statutes more than the countries that are around about her. Zechariah chapter 5, verse 5 to 8. In addition, the messenger of the Lord says, The faithful, eh, sorry, Isaiah adds, The faithful city, that is the SDA, has become an alert. It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it, in it, but now, murderers, of course. thy princes are rebellious and the com companions of thieves or oh, Catholics, according to Uriah Smith. Everyone loves gifts and the followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither does the cause of the widow come unto them. Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 21 and 23, the messenger of the Lord, Ellen G. White, saw this, and that's why she, she wrote, They, the SDAs, have loved God of his glory, and they defrauded the word by a counterfeit of the gospel. They have refused to surrender themselves to God for the salvation of the word, and they have become agents of Satan for its destruction. The people whom God has had called to be the pillar and the ground of the truth have become representatives of, of Satan. So as yes, you are representative of okay. Satan. If you don't don't hate me, go and raise your prophet and stone her. Of course. God cannot do more for money through these agencies as yes, eh? fighting over money hmm. on the Sabbath. Pastor and the church elders, and they say, Church of God. Church of God or Church of Satan? The whole system has to be abolished. That is, they have to be abolished. That's why I say, Come out of her. There shall be no stone remain on another. Those churches are going to be demolished because the Lord said it. Because they have chosen a leader. And their leader is Satan, according to first selection messages, volume 1, page 204 and 205. They have chosen a leader, that is Satan, who has chained them to his car as captives. You know, he has chained you. They are chained to the, to the, car, of the car of Satan. Of Bewildered and deceived they are moving on in a gloomy procession toward the eternal ruin, to death in which is no hope of life, toward the night to which comes no morning. The desire of wages, page 36. Are you with me? Go and read after you have read, then go, raise your prophet, prophetess, and the stone her. She prophesied on that. God said, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 13. For I have told Eli that I will judge his house mm -hmm. for even, forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. Because his sons made themselves vile, and he, restri he, restri he restrained them not. Yes. Because Eli refused to judge and correct the evil, God removed his spiritual authority. Yes. So those pastors in the SDA church, God has removed the authority. They are just in business. And that is exact, exactly what is happening in the church of Jesus Christ today, the SDA. Mm -hmm. eh? <laughs> Some time ago, I spoke with the several SDA pastors that I visited in their offices. Mm -hmm. When I told them of my concern about all the corruptions creeping into the church, and the lack of divine rebuke, one of the senior leaders just shook his head. Another pastor admitted, Brother Tura, 
I'm afraid if I say it openly, I will risk my job and most of the members will leave. Can you hear? Everyone among these modern pastors is easy on their people. They are afraid to offend them. I can honestly say I do not know of ten grey-haired ministers with the courage to cry out against the sin. Are you with me? Just ten, I can't find. Oh, we have cords. Just working for money. Most older warriors for the Lord are either spiritually dead or dying. That is partly in front of their televisions or smartphones. Sucked dry of all power because their minds have been vexed by the spirit of this world. Of course. Planning, building houses, cars, that is in their heads. Their sermons are ethical. That is the lonely, love for the wife, mm. the, the, the religion of relationships, mm. allies God, etc., etc. They are where allies are you with me? We are together. Locking themselves into oblivion, growing fat and prosperous, afraid to deal with the sin. Are you listening to me? Yes. Compare yourself with the, the church you attend. Entertainers, I call them? Entertainers. Eh? <laughs> church entertainers. They are highly paid. To lead many souls to hell. They can't speak out the sin of the people. God was fed up with the early generation as he's fed up with the SDA, especially these modern pastors. Yes. God was fed up with the early generation. The Lord sent an unnamed prophet to warn Eli. Mm. Can you read it for me, First Samuel chapter two, verse thirty-one? Of this course. is a known and an unknown prophet. Even I don't know his name, but he was a man of God. Read it. Of course, we read the following. Behold, he said, "Behold, the days comes mm -hmm. that I will cut off then thine, thine. thine arm mm -hmm. and the, the arm of thy father's house, mm -hmm. that the." that there shall not be an old man in thine house. house. In thine house. Okay, thank you. Mm. God was saying in other words, I'm quitting this house. Mm. I'm removing my presence. I will make you powerless of and course. I will judge your wicked pastors. I'm going to turn this old system over to the enemy. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation. Verse 32. Due to lowering the standard and the winking at the church members' sins, that is why the enemies of the gospel, the Jesuits or Roman Catholic crusaders, are employed in the SDA church. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are teachers in our universities. Yes, they hold important positions, and yes, they elect the high priest, the general conference president. Are you listening carefully? We are so careful. There is no way church members can fight over money on the Sabbath, and then you, president, Mr. President, you are there. It means you don't know how to pray, you don't know even your call. You are just an actor in the drama. No wonder that even the curriculum is prepared by them so as to send the whole generation of young people who are going to study pastoral ministry to hell. Mm -hmm. For instance, one time I told a pastor who wanted to go to the University of Arusha, Arusha. so you have plenty of money, mm -hmm. hey, just look for beggars on the street, see, and then you provide them because they don't have food. If you have more money, throw in a toilet. And God will bless you. Rather than going to the theological seminary to take pastoral st studies, because you will be made a devil incarnate. Mm -hmm. oh, Currently, God. most of the so-called discretionary funds of the National Council of Churches, USA, for example, are used to support communist insurgents or communist guerrillas mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. For Tanzania, it is CCT or Christian Council of Tanzania. Tanzania. I don't know in Kenya, but it, such organizations are every every country. Is the SDA church doing this nonsense? This is stupid business. Yes, 
1959, the SPA church sent a total of 6,700 US dollar to support the National Council of Churches, NCC. You can see later from the National Council of Churches, January 29, 1960, Donald F. Landwa, Deputy General Secretary of the National Council of Churches Department of Finance. In 1969, they gave a total of 5,950 US dollar to support the National Council of Churches. See later from the National Council of Churches, April 7, 1970, Constantine Jacket, Director of the Research Library. In fact, in 1984, the SDA Church itself admitted to giving 80,000 US dollars to the World Council of Churches and the National Council of Churches. And then stated, eh, can you read for me that? I can eh? read it. Eh, did, eh, it, read it. It stated that this is a, exactly. ex exactly what the church has been doing for the last few years. And they are not, this is exactly what the church has been doing for that, the last few yes. years. That is from later from the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, June 13, 1985, Mitch A. Tyner Esker, Associate Director and the Regal Council of the Department of Public Affairs and the Religious Liberty. Mm -hmm. See also later from the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, October 23, 1984, from W.L. Muli and the Treasurer. And we wonder why the church in America doesn't have any spiritual power or influence. Even in Tanzania, the church now is eh? For instance, in Kenya, do you think you are going to have influence? You fight in the church. No. Even, even pagans are laughing at you. Many denominational churches have turned into mausoleums where they can bury people. Funeral parlors eh? have joined the church so that they can bury my dead. They have no life, mm -hmm. no strength, mm -hmm. because God has walked away from them. And you know, God normally when you, you go astray, he doesn't tell you that I'm leaving. You have seen, he lives, and he never say bye. Yes. Era is church. The church at Shiloh is an example of this. The Lord is severely judged and abandoned that church, and it all came down in one day. day. Can you read for me First Samuel chapter 4, verse 10 to 11? Of course I can. We read mm -hmm. the following. And Israel was Sm smitten, smitten, uh -huh. and they and they fled, and they fled every man into his tent, uh -huh. and there was a very great slaughter, 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 uh -huh. for they fell, for their fell, for they fell of Israel, thin thirty, thirty, thirty thousand footmen, footmen. Uh -huh. And, and the, the ark of God was, was taken. taken. Uh -huh. And the two sons of Eli, ha, what Hofini, if, Hofin and, and Phinehas, were, were slain. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thus again was left upon the page of history a testimony for all future ages. Yes. That the iniquity of God's professed people will not go unpunished. Of the greater the knowledge of God's will, the greater the sin of those who disregard it. Patriarchs and Prophecy, page 584 to 585. God said, Enough! And in one day, the ark of the Lord was captured, mm -hmm. symbolizing the removal of his presence. Mm -hmm, the glory had departed. Mm -hmm. Ichabod was born, and the God quickly moved in judgment against the ministry. Mm -hmm, when Eli heard the news about the ark being captured, can you read for me what happened? Of First course. Samuel chapter 4, what verse happened? 18. Yes. Because we read the following. He, he fell from off, off the, the seat. seat. 
backward by by the side of the gate mm -hmm. and, and his neck break okay and he died uh -huh. for for he was an old man uh -huh. and, and he heavy. heavy oh fat, oh, fat. Yes? you yes, know that course. is why i say oh fatty people will never go to heaven it is not god is planning for you to eat 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 and uh, until you become <laughs> fat so he, look here, this is a man of, he say man of, you call him man of God, always in the temple. But now he had he become fatty until he can't move on his own. Mm -hmm. And when he was informed about this, he just fell from the city, mm -hmm. that stroke. Is, that is due to pressure. So he know. had a stroke. Mm -hmm. You know, That's when you are fat, you expect to stroke at any time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have to be careful with what you eat. So he had a stroke. If ever there is a great curse on the household, it is that of allowing the youth to have their own mm -hmm. way. Of course. Look at the curse that fell on Eli's house. Mm -hmm. This is a vivid picture of what is happening to much of organized religion in America today, even in Tanzania, in Kenya. Organized religion, all they have become confused. And even the church pastors cannot say, hey, this is a sin. They are also joining eh, the, what? The, 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 the carnival. The system is under judgment. Hmm? Its ministers are falling left and eh, Right. Its leaders are spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. The glory of the Lord has departed. departed. And the church has been turned over to the enemy. enemy. Of course. It is just as it it is just as it was in the days of Jeremiah. The people in his day said, We are safe. Mm -hmm. We are in no danger. Mm -hmm. We are not going to lose our salvation. Mm -hmm. But God spoke through Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. We he steal, mm -hmm. murder, and they commit adultery, and they swear falsely, and they walk after other gods whom you know not, and they come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and they say, We are healed. We are delivered mm -hmm. to do all these abominations. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh where I set my name at the first, yes. and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. You see, of course. every time they went astray <laughs> through the prophecy, they were reminded, go to Shiro. When you mention Shiro to the Israelites, he comes to his mind. 30,000 fell in one day. The ark of God was captured, mm -hmm. plus those priests were died on the same day. Mm -hmm. In every generation, mm -hmm. that, is, uh, sorry, that is Jeremiah chapter 7, 7 verse 9 to 12. In every generation, God wants God corrupt churches. Go back to Shiloh. Go back to the church of Eli. Mm -hmm. See what I did to Hophni and Phineas. You as Adventist pastors. Go and see and you think that you are okay. No. See what happened when I took my presence away. My glory will depart wherever there is sin in the camp. Mm -hmm. Whenever evil is embraced, then quickly and without fail, the judgments of God will follow. Of course. Yet while the church of Eli was under judgment, the Lord was busy raising up a remnant, just like now. Samuel represents this holy remnant. A prepared body of believers that rises out of the ruins mm -hmm. of the old decadent church. Well, according to time, it is the 11th hour movement and you may join us. The final exodus from all foreign churches. Isaiah puts, puts it this way. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward mm -hmm. and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. And they that escape out of Mount Zion, mm -hmm. the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Isaiah chapter 37 verse 31 to 32. I want to show you what goes into the training and the preparation of this last day remnant. Mm -hmm. eh? We say 11th hour movement. I want to show how are they trained. 
Number one, the remnant is always bathed in prayer and intercession. That's why I'm fighting with the people here. You are hammering people, but I can see your sermons here dry and lifeless. Unless you pray, you fast, no way out. Of course. Listen carefully. Mm -hmm. Hannah bathed her son, Samuel, through bitter tears and much prayer. Mm -hmm. Can you read for me first Samuel 1.10? Of course. Mm -hmm. And she was in bitterness or grief mm -hmm. of soul, and played unto the road, and wept so. Try to imagine the scene. Mm. Hannah is at the temple every day, on her knees before the altar, mm. crushed and broken because she is childless. Of course. And as she weeps, her adversary, Penina, mm. her husband is the other wife, makes fun of her. Eh? Can you read for me first Samuel 160? How course. Penina? Medi. We read the following. And her adversary adversal also provoked her soul. For, provoked her soul. Of course, provoked her soul for to make her flat. flat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There are three important things I want to point out from this passage. First, the remnant that Samuel represents is born in a grief and intercession. Yeah, Look at the reformers, but they have to be on their knees. Second, those who play and grieve after God's heart will be provoked by adversaries. And the third, God's remnant is always going to be misunderstood as mm. they, and they misunderstand us right now. Note what happened to Anna as she prayed. First Samuel 1, 12 to 14. And uh, he says, And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth or watched her. Now Hannah she spoke in her heart, only her lips moved. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away, put away thine, put away thy one from thee. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. Yes. Eli was so out of touch with God. God. Are you God. with me? Mm. Eli was so out of touch with God. God. So dead in his spirit, mm. he thought Hannah was drunk. Eh? Mm -hmm. And right now they think we are drunk and of they are okay. <laughs> he said to her, woman, how long are you going to come in here? This way, put away the bottle. This is amazing to me. Eli wouldn't collect his own sons for their open drunkenness and adultery. Mm -hmm. Yet he mistook a great woman of God for a drunk. Mm -hmm. You see? Of course. They think we are drunkard. While they are just dancing in the church. Mm -hmm. Are they not drunkard? Are they drunkard? Nothing has changed today. The dedicated Christians give themselves to prayer. Are you listening to me? You, you reformers in Kenya and Marawi and Zambia. Eh, don't say yes, yes, eh, have gone astray. If you don't pray, you are the ne next victim. Eh? Mm -hmm. The next plea to Satan. Mm -hmm. Pray much, even if fast, even though you die, die. But you have to pray. Unless you pray, you, pray, you are finished. Nothing has changed today. Dedicated Christians give themselves to prayer. Walk holy and separated unto Jesus. And yet pastors often become their adversaries. They cling and persecuting them. Can't you see what is happening in Kenya? Members and the pastors fighting the church on the Sabbath day. And the pastors they cling and persecuting the reformers. Those reformers. But why did you fight for money in the church? Why did your pastor go to take another pastor's wife? And yet you say, this is the church of God. Church of God or church of Satan? <laughs> it is the synagogue of Satan, my friend. Yes, we look strange in front of nominal Adventists mm -hmm. right now. We look strange because me, I always point out 
You stop this because they want they want us to come with the, the gospel of relationship. Mm -hmm. You know those are also our Christian, our fellow Christian. Our fellow Christians why they sleep in the guest house. <laughs> when Anna was at the altar, she was filled with the grief, burdened for the birth of a son. Mm -hmm. All she could do was move her lips because of her groaning in the spirit. She prayed, If thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and they remember me, and they will give thine handmaid a man child, mm -hmm. then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. life. Can you see? Of course. And the Lord answered, First Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. If you are going to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, then like Hannah, you are going to feel the pain and the grief of God for his church. Yet God had Hannah. That is what Samuel's name means. God hears my prayers. Of course. And likewise today, God is hearing the prayers of those who yearn for the birthing of a holy new work of the Spirit. That is the revival of primitive godliness, the eleventh hour movement, so that another exodus, final exodus, may happen. Mm -hmm. These believers want to see God move in a special way, and the Lord is going to hear their cry. Out of the spiritual womb of an unknown but small army of intercessors, a body of believers is being birthed. That is a Samuel company who have given themselves totally to God. Here are two distinguishing marks of God's holy remnant. Number one, they pray like Hannah. Not just ten minutes. Father, help us. Ah, that is not a prayer. Sometimes you have to stay to stay the whole night praying. Do you think yourself, you reformers? Are you comfortable? <laughs> On the day they hunt is when you will come to your mind. So they pray like Hannah. Their burden is deep and their heart is steered because of the wickedness in God's house. Mm -hmm. People fighting over 12.5 million on the Sabbath. Eh? Is that God's church or synagogue of Satan? That is synagogue of Satan. And like Hannah, they give themselves to prayer every day of their lives. Every day, mm -hmm. every minute. Mm -hmm. So you have to breathe heaven through prayer they are not up and down hot and cold mm. no they are wholly given to god they go to him and they pour out their soul of course psalms 62 verse 80 read for me we read the following trust in him at all times ye people pour out your heart before him thank you mm. Psalms chapter 42 verse 4 says, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. Of course. Samuel became a great man of prayer. So much so that Israel never asked him for counseling. Eh? You see, an atlas pastor calling women for counseling. Yes. Are you with me? Yes, again. Was, why, why call people for counseling? Just direct them. Direct them to Jesus. Let them repent their sin. They will stop that, 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 that stupid business in their homes. So you say, I'm a counselor. Eh? They say what? Marriage clinic. Mm -hmm. Hey, my dear, go and work on that. When people tell you, oh, what is happening in that bedroom? People of Kenya or people of Tanzania, you will learn mad because you don't expect these people who put on nice suits can do such thing to their spouses. Instead, they asked him to pray for them, not counseling. Mm. Scripture says that when the people wanted a king, mm. you see, mm. the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. Of and all the people greatly feared the Lord and the Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 18 to 19. When you see pastors, Taking the case to the court of law. Are you with me? Yes. Eh? Like those people in Kenya. Mm. So we have taken the court, the, the case to the 
court of law. You take the case to those pagans. Eh? Why can't you kneel and pray? When you see pastors taking the case to the court of law, is it not the sign that they have forgotten prayers? Are uh, these pastors or pagans? Tithes and the donations are used to enrich the pagans at the court of law. Yeah, and yet, in their ignorance, they think they are the remnant, remnant church. Yeah? I normally say, these are just devil incarnate. Of Why can't you pray? What is your authority as a Christian? Time after time, we read of the people arguing Samuel, pray for us. It was because they had learned to trust his prayers. You need to have people around you who trust your prayers. And in these last days, there is going to be a praying remnant whom people, whom people will seek for prayer as well. Mm -hmm. People will learn to find them crying, I know someone who touches God. Eh? In those days, for instance, in Sam, eh, those Suji, there was one pastors. Eh, eh, they used to call him in Kiswahili Kifaru or Rhino. When he prays, you can change into a pillar of You can change into a pillar anytime. If you have stolen anything, it, when you go there, you have to repent. Of course. The one who was that. Touch God directly. Yes, he could touch God directly. Okay. But these so. modern pastors in the morning at the guest house, he had that with somebody's wife or fornication. How can they touch God? They believe the policemen can solve their problem. And I say they are lost. Cancelling itself will not meet the need. Rather, it will be the power of praying people who know the mind of Christ. Christ is weary. They are saint. God wants to make you that person. He wants you to be able to touch him and hear from him. He wants to give you a ministry to others who will come to you with their burdens and trials. Mm -hmm. And as you pray for them, his word will come forth. Mm -hmm. You pray and it is done. Of course. Eh? Sometimes, <laughs> I know my tell, if you policemen come, to, do you think I will tell you lies? For me, like, black is black, white is white. And the, even the policeman approaching me, they have to count the cost because I'm not an easy person. No lies. A Christian always you have to be straight. Number two, the remnant is trained to know the voice of the Lord. You know, eh? mm -hmm. I said the voice of who? Lord. The voice of who? The remnant. Mm -hmm. eh? The 144,000. 144,000, morning the Holy Spirit is there, so follow the Holy Spirit. Where, wherever the Holy Spirit leads you, always be there. Amen. Because the time is coming when you will be hunted by the policemen. If you have not learned to pray and depend upon the Lord, how can you know where to go next? You have to know how to pray and touch God and make God your friend. Otherwise, where we are heading, you cannot make it. God was not speaking to Israel at this time because of the sinfulness of the priesthood and the people. I think he does not also speak to the SDA pastors and the members because of their sinfulness. Desires fighting in the church on the Sabbath. Hey, I always say, shame on you. And you say the church of, church of God or, or the synagogue of Satan. The Bible says, listen carefully, First Samuel chapter 3 verse 1, and the word of the Lord was precious or oh, rare in those days. Like nowadays, of the word course. of God is rare. Yes, eh? yeah. For instance, if the pastor advises you to go to the court of law, or debtors go to the police, are you a pastor or a pagan? pagan. There was no opening vision. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? There mm -hmm. was no opening. Vision. How can God speak to you while you are too evil? You have to remove sin so that the Lord can speak to you. Of course. Yet in the midst of this famine of the word, the Lord appeared to Samuel. Mm -hmm. Can you read for me First Samuel chapter 3, verse 8 and 7? Of course I can. Mm -hmm. We read yeah. the following. The Lord called Samuel. Mm -hmm. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord 
yet revealed unto him. The Lord had passed by his chosen servant, the gray-haired man, to speak to the child. Mm. Sammy was only 12 years old at that time. And although he was a devout child, he didn't yet know the voice of the Lord. There is a way how the, the, the voice of the Lord speaks. Of course. So God came to Samuel's bedside and called to him plainly. At first Samuel thought it was Eli speaking. He didn't know he was being trained to design voices. Mm. That is to hear directly from God. Please not hear. God was not speaking to Eli. Of course. In fact, it seems that up till now, only one prophet was hearing from God. Mm. That is, the unnamed man who warned Eli, God was about to cut him oh. off. Yet even if this was a man's voice, the only voice Eli could hear. That is, because he had grown deaf to the voice of God. God you know, mm -hmm. deaf. It means you don't hear the voice of, of course. Uh, and so it is today. An Eli ministry, mm. spiritually dead and full of compromise, has lost all discernment, all authority, and all touch of God. What is needed in the church today are men and women who can stand up with spiritual authority mm -hmm. because the word they preach is backed up by a life of righteousness. Mm -hmm. A messenger has the message mm -hmm. and it resembles the mm -hmm. message. When you speak, you speak with the authority. Mm -hmm. And normally you tell these reformers, so you speak, you argue, you argue, you are wasting your time. Spend much time, even ta 10 hours in prayer is when you can move the world. Otherwise, you are going to be defeated. Yeah, of course. So many preachers today aren't able to stand before the people and say, thus say the Lord, mm -hmm. because they are not tuned to God's voice. Hearing from God takes more than quality time alone. Are you listening carefully? Yes. Hearing from God takes more than quality time alone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the mountain, mm -hmm. in the sanctuary, while others go to sleep, you spend hours and hours praying and even fasting is when you can hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. It takes more than simply saying, speak, Lord, for your servant here. <laughs> Don't say speak. How can he speak to you a sinner? This night you are, you are seeing, this night you are with the uh, concubine. Then you say, speak, Lord. He will smite you. Be careful. No, there isn't a formula for hearing God. Mm -hmm. There are only 10 steps to follow. Mm -hmm. You see, before you can hear God, he has to be talking to Thank you. Eli could have spent months alone, shouting with God, crying, Lord, speak to me. But he had no chance of hearing God's voice, voice mm -hmm. because God was not speaking to, to him. He was just enjoying fringe benefits, mm -hmm. thinking that all years will be the same. God wanted to talk to Samuel. He talks only to those who have prepared their hearts to hear. Amen? Amen. You claim to be the archbishop of the church. Your mind is on positions taking advantage of yourself, fornicating with the Salome's in the temple. Mm. And then you think God will talk to you. Forget it. Are you with me? Of course. Like those people fighting in the church on the Sabbath. <laughs> I wish I had a stick and then it spank from the pastor to the, to the church elders. Everyone. It is better they, they, they just fight for on the, themselves. At least. You can forget about evil-minded preachers ever Hearing God's voice. Forget about any congregation possibly knowing God's voice if they continue promiscuously divorcing, mm -hmm. fornicating, mm -hmm. and over indulging in sports. Eh? Simba and the younger in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Entertainment, eh? pleasures, for instance, kitchen party mm -hmm. here in Tanzania, they go at night. The only things God will speak to them are one word sentences. Eh? They think they will hear God. God help us, lead us. God will never listen to you. The only way he can speak to you is repent, mm. turn, weep, or else you are finished. Of course. Some had no deep theological knowledge of God when the Lord first spoke to him. Mm. But he had a tender, 
pure, devoted heart that was open to the Lord. Those theological uh, degrees, <laughs> my dear, those people who have gone to those schools are devil incarnates. Who is committing a data eh, in that uh, conference in Kenya? Pastor at the headquarters. And the president is there just laughing, smiling. Eh? And man of God. Man of God or man of Satan? So what do you think was the first thing God taught Samuel after speaking to him? Listen carefully. He says, I will not put up with the sin. Eh? I will not put up with the sin in my house. Mm -hmm. you know? God and the sin like the south and the north. Of course. They never match together. I will not wink at and judge the sin in my servants. In essence, the Lord told Samuel, I'm going to judge Eli because he knew his sons were wicked, but he did, he did nothing to restrain them. They should have been stripped of their robes and told, you can't go near the holy place. Now, Samuel, I want to show you my hatred for sin in my house. I want to show you what it is going to take to hear my voice and walk with me. Are you listening carefully? Especially USDA pastors at the headquarters, you are commandering those, eh, those murderers and adulterers, pastors, and you think everything is, is going to be okay. Going, not less than two years, going, God is going to smite you. Let us continue. My dear, you don't know what I'm doing. Please repent of your sin, otherwise you are finished. The holy remnant in these last days know that, know that right now God is judging his church, like those who, who, who fought in Kenya on the Sabbath. And I'm sure that there are some choirs here in Tanzania and some pastors. My dear, it is just a matter of two or three months. They will begin fighting in the church because the Holy Spirit has come from such people. And they know what God's plan is. They know he's going to pull down and destroy unholy ministries. Mm -hmm. It is no wonder the Bible says Samuel spoke such, such sure words. He had heard the voice of God. Mm -hmm. He had spent much time praying, mm -hmm. seeking the Lord, shut in with him. Of and course. God spoke clear to him at all times. My dear, especially reformers, Spend time fasting and praying. Amen. <laughs> on that day, they say they will say we are going to hang you if you haven't prayed. Then on that day, you will pray. And I'm praying that the Sunday law may go forth so that they hang you and you become a Christian. There is just a whole people right now who have been trained to know God's voice. These praying saints pour out their hearts to Him, and in turn, He pours out His His to them. Number three. The remnant will be trained in a true deliverance. That is through the knowledge of the ways of God. Mm -hmm. Not this theological training. Of course. I said a theological, eh, a, a student have, after going to the theological seminar just one year, he has become the most demoralized creature on the planet Earth. You may not understand me because you won't understand me. I have been in those theological seminaries. I know everything. Mm -hmm. If you are not careful, when you go to the theological seminary, I normally say you are finished, you are hell bound. Mm -hmm. I have warned in many previous messages, the word is headed for chaos and a corruption. Union of churches, for instance, Muslim fasting, the Seventh-day Adventist women cooking for them food of tari. Mm. Seventh-day Adventist pastors playing football with the Muslim sheikhs on the Sabbath to maintain relationships. Pagan marriages by having kitchen parties being blessed by our modern pastors, especially in the cities, will end up in chaos instead of bringing peace. Of course. This modern thing, these choirs, all will end in chaos. No way out. You may have read or heard, heard preached my message about the coming less wars. Coming less? Wow. Eh, those who have been listening to my Swahili sermons. As of now, it may, it, may, it, it may not look as if this will happen. Now everything is comfortable, but it is going to happen soon. Yes. There will be less armies, whites versus blacks, poor versus rich, educated, educated versus uneducated. 
members versus pastors, it is going to happen. Like what happened in that church. Eh? The pastor beaten by the church elder. Eh? So there were two teams mm -hmm. eh? in the same church, over 12.5 million. We are facing such a time of judgment that the word deliverance will take on a whole new meaning, a whole new meaning. In the past, Christians have thought of deliverance mainly as physical healing. Mm -hmm. And you see there are so many, I call them, the, the, these modern, modern, they say uh, prophecy and uh, apostles, but those are just after money. Of course. They say deliverance, that is not a deliverance, that is satanism mm -hmm. or witchcraft. The Christians have thought of deliverance mainly as physical healing. That is eyesight restored, crippled limbs healed. But soon there will be such wrath from heaven poured, poured upon us, the greatest deliverance will be from fear and terror. Fear and terror. That means I don't fear any person who will move me. Mm -hmm. I speak out and I speak loudly. They are seen. What can they do because the Lord is on my side? Amen. Deliverance at that time will mean having a sure word from heaven. Are you with me? Having a sure word from mm -hmm. heaven. Jesus said men's hearts would fail them for fear as they see the awful things coming on the earth. And indeed, people will claim to know what God is going to do next. Yeah. They will turn in all directions, wanting to hear the voice of someone who is calm, peaceful, not going crazy. They will cry, tell me, is this God's judgment? Mm. When is it all going to end? Mm. Hmm? And who do you think is going to have the answers? You, you. The ordinary Christian who has been shut in with God, yes. praying. Mm. That's why, eh, well, this, this, this Mama Rama, this is whole week. Mm. People say we can't be taught by a woman. Let him listen. You listen to her. She's emphasizing meeting God in prayer. Mm -hmm. You will be full of calm and peace while everything is falling apart. I don't fear. I know others will die, but the Lord will let me finish my mission Amen. because God is with you and you are hearing from heaven. He warned you all oh, this was coming and he promised to protect you. I have a vision in my mind that I believe is from the Lord. It is of hundreds of cars fleeing from New York, from Dar es Salaam and everywhere. Of all camps in New Jersey, in, the, in Nairobi, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Of people sleeping in their cars for weeks at a time just to get away from all the chaos. Eh? You have the city, the life is eh? Nairobians, eh? Dar es Salaam, eh? people running. They have money but they don't know how to spend it. Mm -hmm. Everything is becoming confused every day. Where will you run? The same will happen in other cities too. It is going to be beyond anything we can imagine. But God is going to have a lady, he's going to have a lady, his holy remnant, mm -hmm. a group of people who are steadfast, sure, mm -hmm. and immovable, mm -hmm. like Samuel, their weights will not fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Of and these are the 100, a group of 144,000 who are steadfast, sure, and immovable like Samuel. Eh? Mm -hmm. This is what we call 11th hour mm -hmm. movement. Samuel had the answers for Israel. He offered them true deliverance. More than 50,000 people had died because they peeked into the ark. Everywhere the ark was carried, people died like flies. The whole land was in chaos. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew what to do. Mm -hmm. The people said, this judgment has to be from God. Who shall go before him for us? Everyone is afraid to meet the Lord. Mm -hmm. So they went, so they sent for Samuel. And he told them, I want you to gather at Mizipe with me. Mm -hmm. There I will show you the way out. Samuel had the right word for the crisis hour. Can you read it for me? Okay, this is... First Samuel chapter 7, verse 3 to 4. Yes, we read the following. 
and Samuel spoke speak, and speak. Speak unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your heart, then put away the strange goodies. Yeah, all that in the doctrine, mm. okay? And Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your heart unto the hearts, Lord. Hearts your same. heart unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And save him, serve him and only. serve him only. And he will derive, deliver. Will deliver you out of the of the hand oh. of the Philip. Philistines. 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 Okay. That is the first Samuel chapter 7, verse 3 to 4. The answer wouldn't be found in praying for anybody and everybody, mm. no matter their sinful condition. There was no blanket promise of deliverance for all who wanted it. No, Samuel cried, mm. get your heart right, mm. judge your sins, mm -hmm. prepare your heart before the Lord. Mm. First, sin must be reproved, judged, and forsaken. Mm. A pastor who smiles to sin should be stoned because you want us you want us to be killed by the road. Mm. Then the children of Israel did put away Balim, that is the Trinity doctrine, of course. Eh? Sunday God, mm. and Ashtaroth, eh? and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather O Israel to Mizipe, mm. and I will pray for you unto the Lord. That is verse four and five. Of so course. the people fasted, you see, of course. there are some people who say, hey, they, 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 Jesus fasted for us, I have us as I can't fast, you, 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 be careful, of eh? that you, you are a demon, you are demon possessed, because that day they want to hang you, you will fast whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. So the people fasted and they humbled themselves before the Lord, Amen. and they gathered together to Mizipe, mm -hmm. and they said there, we have sinned against the Lord. No. And the Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizip, verse 6. Yes. He judged them. He exposed the sin in the camp. Mm. A revival of genuine repentance followed Samuel's powerful reproof. You pastor, rebuke the sin. Preach the word. Don't fear to be taken out of your posting. God is telling us his Samuel company will bring to uh, they will bring to pass great deliverances through the power of intercession and the psalm cried unto the lord for israel and the lord heard him and as the psalm was offering up the panty offering the philistines drew near to battle against israel but the lord thundered with the air Great thunder mm. on that day upon the Philistines, and they discomfited them, and they were smitten, smitten before the before Israel. First oh, Samuel chapter, chapter seven. seven, verse nine to ten. Amen. There was a thunder from heaven, followed by a great slaughter, and the God's people won the victory. Mm -hmm. It all happened because one man knew the answer. Samuel knew what to do because he had heard from God. We need at least two or three people, the formers, who have, who have heard from God. Otherwise, we are going to preach for 10 years. Mm -hmm. But I'm not ready to preach for 10 years. Just two to three years, the job is done. I believe God is going to use his holy remnant in these last days to steer multitudes, revive pastors, and awaken churches. This army will return people's hearts back to God by bringing them to repentance. That is through the power of prayer mm -hmm. and the godly reproof for sin. Mm -hmm. hey, don't worry, even though you uh, commit your data, mm -hmm. uh, no, that is not a good pastor. He should be stoned or removed from the pulpit. Of course. Your neighbors and the co-workers are all going to want the answers. They already know you by your peace and the calm. We say integrity and the serenity. And one day they will come running to you crying, 
what is the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. what, is, what is God saying. Mm -hmm. When I speak of a holy remnant in training, I do not mean an army of preachers, evangelists and missionaries, or trained clergy, we say uh, religious elite, those who have gone to theological seminaries. After all, those don't have the Holy Spirit. What I'm referring to are those who have been trained by Jesus in mm. the wilderness. Amen. I'm talking about ordinary saints, mm. that is lovers of Jesus, who, who themselves would be signs and wonders to the world, full of peace and calm. Mm. God doesn't want a professional army trained in man's methods. He wants men and women who are trained in prayer by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's seeking believers who are shut in with him, mm -hmm. preparing their hearts before him, learning to hear his voice. Amen. Are you with me? Does me this describe you? Is your life right now a witness to a scared and a shaken world? I ask you, get your own with God and let him begin to speak to you. Amen. Ask him to reveal the sin in your life. Forsake all that the Holy Spirit convicts you of. And make yourself available to him by giving yourself to prayer. Then you will be a ready soldier in his great last day remnant army. Eleventh hour movement. Hallelujah. Amen. I view, the message of the Lord says, I view the church in a more dangerous condition than they ever have been. Experimental religion is known but by a few. Mm -hmm. The shaking must soon take place to purify the church. And I'm praying for the Sunday rule so that the church may be purified. Of course. Preachers should have no scruples to preach the truth as it is found in God's word. Let the truth cut. Are you mm, with me? Let course. the truth cut. Mm. I've been shown that I have been shown why ministers have not have not more success easy. They are afraid of hurting feelings, of fearful of not being courteous, and they lower the standard of truth and conceal, if possible, the peculiarity of our faith. I saw that God could not make such a success, such successful. The truth must be made pointed and the necessity of a decision argued. And as false shepherds are crying, peace and are preaching smooth things, the servants of God must cry aloud and spare not and leave the results with God. Mm -hmm. If they kill me, have I lost anything? Yeah. Nothing. Ellen G. White, Spiritual Gifts, Volume 2, page 284. Conclusions. Bali worship is to subscribe to the Trinity Do doctrine. Of course. As those people in Samuel's day mm -hmm. were subscribing or following Bali, so the modern pastors, the modern generation are subscribing or following Bali worship. Mm -hmm. That is the tr Trinity Do doctrine. Do now, where the Holy Trinity came from is where baptism in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit came from. Mm -hmm. And it is also where Sunday worship and the old Babylonian traditions came from. So that people may worship Satan and the Pope. Mm -hmm. Come out of Babylon, my people. My brother and sister who is listening to me, take a decision right now and be baptized in the name of Jesus so that you may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Decide now. Amen. The message of the Lord says, a nation's sin and a nation's ruin were due to the religious leaders. Mm -hmm. eh? Like Eli and, uh, Eli, Eli and his sons, yes. Hophni and Phinehas. Mm -hmm. That is from Christ is the Object Lessons, page 304 to 305. Come out of Babylon, my people. Stop relying on pastors and evangelists, these modern pastors and modern evangelists, because they are looking for profit. Mm -hmm. most, most of them are graphs of Rome to continue teaching the deceptions of the purpose so that they may lose many. They are on their employment. Save your soul. Mm -hmm. Have time to pray 
to pray. Mm -hmm. eh? Even if fast, because people want, when we say Almageddon, it means we want to sell your soul. Of course. Read the scriptures, that is Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy. And the Holy Spirit will be your teacher. Make your decision now and don't wait for tomorrow. Read more and spend much time in prayer and fasting so that God will use you. Eh? Are you with me? Of course. Spend much time in prayer and fasting so that God will use you. Amen. As God used Samuel, he can use you to bring in revival and reformation. The messenger of the Lord says, let, let brethren unite in fasting and the prayer for the wisdom that God has promised to supply liberally. Amen. Testimonies to ministers and the gospel workers, page 499. Mm -hmm. To stand in defense of truth and the righteousness when the majority forsake us. To fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few like nowadays. This will be our test. For instance, in that church, I say, oh, there are all these church members and their pastors are drunk and oh, fighting with the chairs. Eh? Even the policemen, can you preach to that police who take a bribe from you every day? No. And you go to fight in the church? You can't. Are you also Christians? No. Even drunkards are better than you. <laughs> uh, say, I say, this will be our test this time. Mm -hmm. Our test is to stand alone. Don't you think you'll be many? Even here, I always tell people, I want to preach the truth. Will you be with me? If they fear and run, let them run. Mm -hmm. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 136. You will be enabled to stand for the truth if you cultivate the exercise of praying and spending more time with the Lord for power. You don't pray, you are finished. Even though you know many verses, for instance, for instance, this young man in Dacha, I wish he could spend even five hours praying. Eh? He has many people who are listening to him. Pray much is when once you give just one or two sentences, people will repent. You don't pray, you think you have many verses, and my dear, you are finished. Mm -hmm. As of now, champions are few. Here is a new book with a title. That in Italian paradigm, any Adventism. Adventism. It is two shillings, 5,000. The book describes the history of the Adventist church and the, the faith they had. What the prophet Ellen G. White was among them more than 50 years, and how after her death, the church she left has changed into Catholics who celebrate Mass on Saturday because the leaders decided from the beginning to eat on the same table with the Satan. Mm -hmm. All the facts of apostles are explained by, ref by references or evidences, and you will read it yourself instead of waiting for the story. Mm -hmm. Read this book to decide Besides, you can visit our website www.reformdemnos.org to download the ample evidences of how the, of how the SDA church has gone astray and how to receive the letter rain and give the loud cry of the angel of Revelation 18 for books, booklets, and tracts. Call me anytime and I will deliver, deliver them to you. 0758 7350 or 0789 164 774 or 0717 064 774. God's voice is calling you to get the power so that you can withstand the evil days ahead of us. Pray much, fast. If you don't fast, you don't pray, my dear, you better go to. Say bananas because you can't this this battle you can't win, you cannot withstand it. Of course. He will call. He that proweth should plow in hope. And that he that crasheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. First Corinthians nine ten. If you have been touched by this message, send your charity or donations in the tithe to CRDB Bank. Name of account is SDR. The account number is 0150 774 
and uh, Mpesa, Airtel Money, Tigo Pesa, same number, 0758-438-735. Airtel Money, 0789-164-774. Tigo Pesa, 0717-064-774. Uh, this week you are going to have only two, but next week we will improve four until we reach five sermons every week for English speakers. Let us kneel for prayer until the day we meet again. Thank you. Let us pray. Mighty Father and the God you are in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity when we come together. We ask you to be with us. Give us your Holy Spirit triple portion so that we can preach the loud cry messages and awaken all churches, especially the SG church, to stand for the truth, mm -hmm. even to face death. Help your sons and daughters who are prepared for that event to preach the truth and to live the truth. For we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.